great God. You are a mighty God. I thank you, Father, for an opportunity to inspire, to encourage, and to equip your people for this season. Thank you, Father, that your word is breathed by you. It's authored by you. It's inspired by you. And it equips us for various works that you have created us to do. Father, we will take responsibilities of those various functions. I thank you for each and every person that will join in different places. I am so expectant, mighty God. You are a miracle-working God. You are a powerful God. You are a great God. You are a majestic God. I thank you for your angels that are stationed to minister to every need. Every need. There is no need that is too big for you. There is no need that is too big for you. There is nothing that is too hard for you that will be presented on this platform. Whether it's a question, whether it's a prayer request, whether it's a call for healing, whatever it is, Lord God, there is no burden that is too heavy for you. Whatever the burden is, Lord, we thank you for your presence tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will receive help. We will find mercy for every person, whatever they are going through. In the name of Jesus, we have confidence in your ability. We are sure of your will pertaining certain issues. And today as we read your word, we thank you for revelation. We thank you for illumination. We thank you for understanding. We thank you for knowledge. We thank you for wisdom. Wisdom, when applied, will manifest your awesome glory. The knowledge, Amando Sokoshike. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's just pray right now as we pray for the service today, for this session. God Almighty, you will move in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus, evil spirits will be cast out. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the gifts of the Holy Spirit will be in operation. In the name of Jesus. Every person that should be on this platform, you are bringing them here. They are your people. They are your children. We are messengers. We want to be faithful to the assignment tonight. In the name of Jesus, we don't want to compromise the assignment. We want to execute it with excellence. In the name of Jesus, Father, you rosotorebende. Your people are gathered here, turning to you, O oh God. We seek your higher ways. We seek your higher thoughts. We ask you in the mighty name of Jesus to reveal that to us in Jesus' name. Your word that doesn't return void or empty. Establish your word on this platform in Jesus' name. Fulfill your promises regarding corporate worship regarding meeting together to fulfill your will, fulfill your promises in Jesus' name. You say if your people gather together and agree with you, you will bring to pass what they stand on. You say if your people ask, believing they receive, they shall receive. You say believers will pray for the sick and they shall be healed. And Father, we are gathered together today in Jesus' name to do all that and more. And we are expectant. You said you are able to fulfill. Lord God, you said you are in us, we are in you, we are in the Father. You are in me right now, oh God. I'm yielding to your leading. I'm yielding to your guidance. Thank you, Father, that you will guide me to minister to your children as a part of the body 
I thank you, Lord Jesus, that nobody who is listening here will leave and those without any need met in Jesus' name. I'm standing in agreement with them. I'm standing believing with them. I'm standing believing with families. I'm standing believing with individuals. I am standing believing with businessmen. I'm standing believing with businesswomen. Standing believing with civic supreme leaders in civic society. I'm standing believing with people in government. People I am standing in agreement with your word and agreement with what you want to do in this season in their lives. I am standing together with them. I'm standing together with the orphan. I'm standing together, oh God, with the widow. I'm standing together with the homre widower. I'm standing together with anybody in society right now who is tuned in, plugged on this platform right now. I'm standing with them, oh God. As a body of Christ, you say, if one part hurts, the others must empathize, sympathize with them, Father. We must sense and feel their pain. And Father, right now, I'm going to stand with them. I pray, God, that miraculously this word will bring healing to whatever situation, whatever circumstances are hurting them, oh God. Whatever condition they find themselves in. Thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Like the Ambrosio Tokore, the Dazo commanded, like the men by the pool of Bethesda, when you came, you answered. When you came, you made the need. When you came, there was joy. Father, right now I believe you are here. You will meet the need in Jesus' name. My Tore Bakoma, like the men by the men and the men by the gate, beautiful. When your disciples came, the need was met. In Jesus' name, the blind man. When Jesus passed by, the needs were met. In Jesus' mighty name. The woman with an issue of blood, when Jesus was the the need was met. Jairus' daughter, the need was met. Whatever need, whatever need. The adulterous woman who was caught. Mercy came, the need was met. Whatever need is represented here. Just pray wherever you are and thank God that He is a God that answers prayer. He is a God that meets needs. Every need represented here, we believe God will meet our blessed care that them. Nobody will live with a heavy burden here. Nobody will live and come and bound here. Father, you are the one that looses chains. You are the God that opens the prison doors. You are a God in Jesus' mighty name that defends from the attack of enemies. You are a God that protects from sorcerers, from witchcraft, from curses that men put upon us. You are a God who is able to bring an antidote to whatever problem. Just continue this prayer. You are a God who when we call on answers, prayer, you are a merciful God. You are a loving God. You are such a gracious God. You've been so good and so merciful to us. You have kept us up to this point and we say thank you, oh Father. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. We will live it abundantly. Thank you that you came that we might have life and we are having life. Life is good with you. Life is good in your presence. Begin to just thank God wherever you are for the life that you have and for this opportunity to get words of life tonight. Thank you for words of life. Thank you for your words that are spirit and that are life. Thank you for the word of God. Father, I pray that I be disciplined to preach your word, to preach your word. You told Timothy through Paul that preach the word, preach the word. Father, we want the word to be preached on this platform because your word is powerful. Your word is alive. Your word is active. Your word can transform people. Your word can bring people to salvation. Your word can bring healing and restoration. Your word can catapult people to altitudes that no one ever dreamt of. Your word gives us revelation of what our reality should be right now. Your word corrects us. Your word chastises. Your word even encourages and 
inspires us tonight oh god we want to be faithful to whatever word you want spoken on this platform not a word that would just be itching to people's ears not a word that is popular and people desire to hear but a word that must be given in this time and season a word that is relevant to whatever mandoro need needs to be met according to your agenda and your will a word for the season lord i am leaning and depending on you for the ability to articulate it well i'm leaning and depending on you for the ability to speak it clearly in the mighty name of jesus thank you father for testimonies that result testimonies that will be birthed as people apply that word thank you that is i'm preaching as i'm teaching as i'm sharing this word healing will take place on this platform in the name of jesus thank you for word of knowledge thank you for the word of wisdom thank you father for miracles that will happen as the mother of prayer of faith is made across this platform and lives are touched in the mighty name of Jesus thank you for the spirit to be able to discern what is of god and what is not of god in the name of Jesus thank you for the grace that's abounding more and more in the name of Jesus amen and amen and amen the lord is good his mercies and joy forever Welcome you on this platform. I'd like you to take a moment just to say hello to people who just joined. I see Brother Lovebird. I see Sister Tabby. Uh, uh, I see quite a number of people. Yesterday was my daughter's birthday, and I was celebrating it. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for the gifts that you gave her. Gave her. I truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you. For everybody who's had a birthday in this month. Happy birthday. I know Mrs. Ledwaba, it was your birthday yesterday. You shared birthday with my daughter and thank you for the gift. And all of you, happy birthday. Thank you for the life that God has given you. He has taken you thus far. He will not leave you. There is a purpose you are still living today. Just thank God for every person who celebrated his birthday this day. per month or is going to celebrate his birthday this month we truly appreciate you we love you just take a moment guys to say happy birthday to who miss the dwaba just send love and affection show us some love and affection in the mighty name of jesus today our text will come from second Sek- kings it's a beautiful text i was planning to preach on deuteronomy 28 to say Let's see the best God's blueprint of an abundant life through the perspective of Deuteronomy chapter 28. But as I was just about to come online, God just moved me, and I just felt this nudge to share this word that I will share. And I've entitled the sermon "Where Is the God of Elijah?" Where is the God of Elijah? You know, I've heard so many people ask, "Who are you?" uncle uncle in different times and seasons of my life and sometimes you get offended when people ask you that question but why not why not people don't see god physically but they want to see a manifestation of the glory of our god it's okay for them to ask that where is god in this text today i'm just going to first start with first kings and i'm going to read so no sorry second kings i'll read from verse 3 Verse three. I'll read verse one to three, but that's not where I'm going to focus on tonight. Tonight we're going to uh, be focusing on Second Kings uh, chapter six. But I just want to d- read this as an introduction, eh? So it says, Now Moab, 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 sorry, rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab, and has Ahaziah, the king of Israel, fell through the lattice grid in his upper chamber. which was in Samaria and became sick from the injury so he sent a messenger saying to them go inquire go inquire from Belzebub the god of Akron if i will recover from this sickness get it these are people of god they are going to inquire from the god of Akron small g and no wonder the angel of the lord verse 3 said to Elijah The word Elijah the Hebrew meaning is Yahweh is God. 
Yahweh is God, the God of the Bible. He is the true God and he's not in competition with any other gods. There are many gods, Smoji, but there is one true God. And so, for those who join, we are in 2 Kings chapter 1. I just read from verse 1 that a, a king falls, he's hurt, and he goes to inquire from the, uh, from the God of Ekron. And now, this angel of the Lord says to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up. Thank God for the mouthpiece of God. Thank God for the representative of God in this generation who was Elijah. The word meaning Yahweh is God. There was somebody who was showing the nations that Yahweh is the true God. Our God is the true God. People are asking, where is the God of this guy, where Elijah? People are asking, where is your God? Is the same God who answered Elijah. Is the same God who answers us. Is the same God who walks with us. Is the same God who guides us. Is the same God who shields us. Is the same God who answers our prayer. Is the same God who listens to our cry. Is the same God who governs our walk. Is the same God who gives us a culture, a way of living, who gives us values. Is the same God who gives us principles. Is the same God. Where is the God of Elijah? People are asking. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite. His name tells us his purpose. His purpose is to show his generation that Yahweh is God. And he did it well. Elijah, arise, go up and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria. And say to them, is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going to inquire from Beelzebub, the God of Ekron. I'm going to ask you, is it because there is no God in our generation that people are going to inquire from different idols while you are there? A greater than Elijah is here. A greater than Elisha, Elisha is here. A greater than Solomon is here. A greater than Moses is here. Jesus Christ living in and through his church is here. Is there no God in Brixton? Someone might ask. Is there no God in Swaziland? Somebody might ask. Is there no God in South Africa? Is there no God in Is there no God in Zimbabwe? Is there no God in Mozambique? Somebody might ask. If they ask that question, don't get angry. Don't get offended. Arise and shine. Rise up and fulfill your mandate as Elijah did in his time. That was just introduction. God expected people to run to him in time of trouble. God expected people to receive help and find mercy in time of trouble. Yes, just like Hebrews states, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. And I come here. Elijah does a great work. Remember, Elijah means Yahweh is God. And Elisha takes the baton from Elijah. What Elisha demands is, I just want to have a double portion of what I see working through you. I see the impact of your ministry and I want to have a greater impact. Nothing wrong with desiring to have a greater positive impact in your environment. When people are asking, where is the God of Elijah? Your response might be, just watch the impact I make as I fulfill my divine assignment. And here I love what Elijah says. He says, if you see me get taken away, you will have it. And, and what that does, I was asking myself just before I came online, what would that demand of an individual? It would demand you to fix your eyes on the mentor. To watch him clearly, attentively. A greater than Elijah is here. A greater than Elisha is here. A greater than Moses is here. God is asking you to fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. The same way that Elisha fixed his eyes on Elijah because he wanted a greater impartation. He wanted to make an impact in his generation. And he did. He got the mentor from Elijah. And he asked, <laughs> let me read this. This, this. this got me excited as I was reading. Are you Lord God? In verse 2, 
2 Kings chapter 2, verse 14. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and struck the water and says, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And you know what happened? God responds. <laughs> The church needs to sincerely seek the face of God. The same way Elisha gets the mantle from Elijah, the word Elisha means God is our salvation. And I love the names because the names speak a sermon in itself. Yahweh is God. He's, he cannot be met or compared to anybody. And he is our salvation today in the mighty name of Jesus. So Elisha now is taking the mantle. He was fixing his eyes on his mentor and coach. And he takes this mantle. It's not too big for him. He receives from God and he seeks to see a sign of the presence of God. He doesn't just talk words, but he wants a demonstration of the presence of God. He takes the mantle and strikes the water. River Jordan parts in two. Glory to God. The church today must demand to see a demonstration of the power of God in personal lives. So that when they go and minister, they talk about what they've seen and what they've heard. That's what a great witness is expected. Don't lie. Talk about what you have seen and heard. I pray that God will open our spiritual eyes that we may see and we may hear and we may speak about what we've seen and heard in the mighty name of Jesus. Now we come to the message for today. El Elisha is doing a great work. But before I do so, let us pray. We pray that eyes will open, the word will rest on good ground, lives will be transformed and there will be an impact in families and beyond. Wherever you are, wherever you walk, that your presence will be felt because of the presence of God that's inside of you that cannot be ignored in Jesus' name. The first problem will be if you ignore the presence of God in your life, don't expect others around you to sense it. You need to be conscious of righteousness that lives in you. You need to be conscious of dunamis power, resurrection power that lives in you. You need to have an expectation that draws virtue from that presence. And then people around you in Jesus' mighty name will not be able to ignore that because you will, you will apply it wherever you are. In every sphere, you will apply the understanding, the knowledge, and the wisdom that emanates not from self, but that comes from the one that leads within, the one that tabernacles within you. In Jesus' name, can we just pray right now for the word, that, that the word of God will be revealed, that truth will be revealed. Let's just pray that miracle signs and wonders will happen as I share this word. Applications will just come in and people will begin to gain and grab applications while I'm speaking that will relate to specific situations that are represented to every person that watches today, tomorrow, when you can, as long as this is on this platform. Lord God Almighty, the word is going to fall on good ground. I know there are different types of soil that receive the word of God. I pray that you bring people here that are prepared ground to receive that word in Jesus' name. May the word break that fallible ground. May the word rest and may the word bring forth a hundredfold return in Jesus' name. May there be healing that takes place. A healing in Jesus' name that cannot be ignored. A healing that even Gentiles acknowledge that it's only the hand of God. A healing that even skeptics acknowledge it can only be the hand of God. I pray, Father, for supernatural healings for those who have physical ailments or sicknesses or disease. I pray for healing for those who have chronic diseases, asthma, can be healed in the name of Jesus. Sugar and uh, diabetics can be healed in the name of Jesus. The hepatitis A, B, C can be healed in Jesus' name. Whatever disease, whatever sickness, Father, you are in this place and you are working and doing great and mighty works right now in our midst. They are here. And Father, as children of God who prophetically speak your word, we declare in Jesus' mighty name that your word will bring fruit because that's what your word does. Father, we declare in Jesus' name that healing, supernatural healing, people with organ problems, the healing, you know, God can heal heart conditions and heart diseases. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Zikaramondo. You know, God, Makia, we pray for people with organ issues, like heart problems that need sophisticated operations and, and they are in places where they can't afford that. 
people in countries where the medical system is not advanced enough to deal and apply that operation. Father, we call on Jehovah, the healer. God, Yahweh is God. Yahweh is God. That's what the word Elijah, remember, means Yahweh is God. And Elisha, you know, God is our salvation. Father, we call on Yahweh who is God, who cannot be compared to any other God, who is greater than all other gods. We call on him to save spirit, soul, and body, and those that are being resicare, inspired to reach out and believe for that healing, even though people say it's impossible. Thank you for those who were told your life will end at 35. Your life will end at this age. And they were saying their goodbyes. Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name for a new lease of life supernaturally. Yes, oh God, you are able, and you are able. I've had so many testimonies of people that were pulled from near-death experiences, people that were close or taken by, that were miraculously healed, and doctors looked at their report and were amazed and only said it cannot be explained. Father, thank you, Lord God, that you bring people, give your sons, your children, your daughters, Give them those testimonies, oh God. Give them those breakthroughs, oh God. Give them those that make them the desires of their hearts as they faithfully delight themselves in you, as they faithfully rejoice in you, as they come and approach your throne in expectation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, we need a mighty move of God. And God is moving in this place, touching lives, healing sicknesses, healing diseases. We know it's not about the healing of physical ailments only, but it's nicer to celebrate and worship God when your body is good. It's nice to celebrate God when you can breathe well. And so if we can ask him, why not? If you can ask God to heal your kidney, why not? If you can ask God to heal your pancreas, why not? If you can ask God to heal your valve, I mean, you, the, you pray that valve by your heart, why not? If you can ask God to help you breathe, inhale and exhale, why not? Who can tell you not to ask God? Who, who don't let anybody shut you up when you are asking. Remember what happened to the blind man? They wanted to see, they shut them down, but thank God, God heard them. God here on earth, Jesus, the manifested word, Jesus, the revelation on two feet in our that season. Jesus answered, bring them here, minister to those Christ. Don't let anybody stop you from asking God. I will not let anybody water down my faith. If I have faith for my healing, if I have faith for my provision, if I have faith for the supernatural, don't let anyone say stop it. Just call on the name. Call on Jesus and he will answer. He will answer. Amen and amen. Now we go to today's message. I see time. Yeah, I still got about 15 minutes. For those who joined us, we will we, we, we in second case. Introduced by the question, why do you search for help from other gods? The God of Akron, when there is God. Isn't there God in Israel? That was Elijah's message to the king of Samaria. Then later on we go and we see Elisha who takes a mantle from Elijah. Elijah he told him that if you see me get taken away, you'll get that double portion you request. And we say that's symbolic to fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. So as he was fixing his eyes on this mentor, watching closely, we too must fix our eyes and watch closely at Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, because he wants to put in us his word. He wants to put in, in us his spirit, a greater than Elijah, Elisha, a greater than uh, uh, Solomon is here. He, living inside of us, wants to minister to the needs of our communities. Now we are here where Elisha is in the presence and there's a problem, but thank God there's a mouthpiece of God in their, in their midst. It's when I just want to change and play and just turn the volume down a little bit. Bear with me. While I do this, just say hello to each other. Welcome to the people that just joined us and just even invite somebody that you think should be here while I'm doing this. I, I, nice to see Edna. Blessings dynamite you've got fire on the inside of you there's fire on the inside like it's like shut up in your bones don't wait for a platform 
create a platform and minister to those young people. They need to be mentored and coached. That's a word you need to hear. Don't wait for your radio station to invite you. Create a platform and reach out to those young people. Be creative and innovative in how you carry this message and bring it to them with the same passion one would have when you are selling products. Do so and let that passion on the inside burn and God will give you creative ways to reach the people God has been speaking to you to reach. There are many people that are looking at you and, and they are crazy, they they miss teacher. They miss their teacher. They miss their teacher. They miss their teacher. And the Masoto Roba God who can give us the Kababa Brosi Toraba Nekesi Tarabando Sike Tarabai. Thank you, God, for doing that for her. Thank you, Father. I'm just going to read. Now, the king of Aram, which is Syria, was making war against Israel. And he consulted his servants, saying, My camp shall be in such and such a place. The man of God sent a word to the king of Israel saying, Be careful not to pass by this place because the Arameans, the Assyrians, are pulling back to there. Then the king of Israel sent a word from the place about which Elisha, remember the word Elisha means God is our salvation and Elisha is ministering, he's impacting the nation. He is hearing from God. He is a representative of God. And he symbolizes for me right now the need that our community needs. A voice that speaks as a church. Not only to family but to community and, and reaches at a national level. And we see this happening through Elisha. And for those who were with me in chapter 1, there was a question when the king of Samaria was looking for help in other gods. The question was, is they not a god right here? And I said, the question people might be asking is, is they not a god where Etna lives? Is they not a god where Tabitha lives? Is they not a god where Musani lives? Is they not a god? And it's my responsibility to answer that question, I feel. Because as an ambassador of Christ. And if I am saying a greater than Elijah is here, as I read Elijah's exploits, and if I'm saying a greater than Elisha is here, as I read Elisha's testimony, if I'm saying a greater than Solomon is here, I say it with my lips, but there must be an application and a showcasing of that glory. Then people will not seek for help other places. People are seeking for help other places because they are asking, is there a God? And many people are not daring to stand up like Elijah to say and take that message and say, is there no God in our presence here? If you say he's not God, I will demonstrate that to corner. No problem is too hard for God. Nothing is too difficult for God. Nothing is impossible with God. But I feel the church is scared to take that place. The church thinks maybe God's just not able if you are not sure what the church thinks, the question is, what do you think? Because you are the church. Let's go back to your family. Let's drill it down before we go to national level. Let's drill it down before we go global. Let's drill it down to your home. What's the family doing as they seek for answers? Can you answer and say, why do you seek for help in the gods of the different idols God is here. I have an altar. An altar that is on fire. I have an altar. A, a place where I put my bow on my knees and I place my petitions before God. I have an altar where the same God who answered Elijah by fire answers me by the same fire. I have an altar where I take all my petitions, I take all my requests, I take all my anxieties and worries and stresses, turn them into petitions and prayer points with endless expectation. And my family in the process of time have come to know that the God that Ethna worships, the God that Tabitha worships, the God that Utembi worships, answers. We are pendula. We are pendula. They begin to speak and say, I know my daughter will pray over this issue. 
then God will answer. Take on that responsibility. Rise up and say, I want wherever I am planted to showcase that my God is God. That Yahweh is God and Yahweh is our salvation. I want to showcase that because that's why I'm alive today. I'm alive today planted by God as an oak of righteousness to demonstrate his glory. If you believe it, just say hallelujah. Just give a shout of praise and celebration. And so in this case, Elisha, excuse me, I mean, verse 10 now, the king of Israel sent a word to the place where Elisha had warned him. I thank God for obedience and I thank God for taking the word of God seriously. The king receives and honors and values the word and obeys the word. It says here in verse 10, and that's what we need to do as children of God. When we hear the word of God, take it seriously, value it obey it and let it determine our actions in response to that word. Verse 11. Now the heart of the king of Aram and Syria was enraged. The plot of the enemy was totally derailed because of the word that came from an all-knowing God. He sees it all. He knows it all. And so when God gives you a word, trust me, that word has taken into account every enemy strategy. Your obedience to that word is the safest place to be. Your line in your thoughts and your actions to that word is the safest place to be. And so this word that was given was the safest place for the king to be. So they obeyed it, thank God. Verse 12, one of the servants said, none of us. So now the enemy is thinking one of them is a spy. Someone must be telling those guys. We are trying to attack them, but every time we try and advance, we find they know something that they shouldn't know because there's a man of God in the house. There's somebody who is intimate with God. There's somebody who prays. There's somebody who listens to God. But a greater than Elijah is here, greater than Elisha is here. The demand and the call on us today is, are we intimate enough? Do we spend quality time and listen to the voice of God? Because I believe God wants us to know how to be positioned in this season so that we are safe in this time. But let's go back to the text. In this case, the enemy is now trying to find out what, what's going on. Verse 12. One of his servants said, none of us is helping this guy, my Lord or King. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So there's somebody who hears the words that your enemies speak in your bedroom. There's somebody who sees sangomas cast through their bones and sorcerers make incantations at night. That somebody, his spirit is on each and every born again believer. Isn't that amazing? But you see, we can ignore him all our lives. And it will not make a difference, you know, in the impact that we make in our lives. We won't make much of an impact. Sometimes you ignore God at your detriment. You need, like Elisha, to hear and listen to God. Your enemy's plot for your downfall. He hears everything. Everything. He knows everything. If he doesn't tell you, he doesn't, and you don't have to know. You just pretend to my words. But if he tells you there is an action that he needs you to do as a result, you can't know everything he knows. You can't know everything people are plotting against you. Imagine you knew everything your enemy was wishing upon you. You would not be normal. But God knows you don't need to know everything that enemies plot against you. He protects you graciously. But in this case, they needed to hear hear this and know this but thank God there was somebody who was intimate with God there was somebody who was listening to God there was somebody who was prayerful there was somebody who trusted in God there was somebody who did that and as a result Yahweh was salvation for Israel at this moment in time God wants to save your family God wants to save your community but are you going to be that somebody today are you going to be the somebody that sets aside time to pray and listen to the voice of God? Are you going to be that somebody that studies the word of God and inclines their ear to what God is saying right now regarding your family, your children, your husband, your wife, your relatives, your cousins, your nation, your home? Are you going to be that somebody who knows that God sees all? He sees what's done in secret places. He knows it all. If you 
can just tune your ear and listen to him and then he speaks clearly to you if you need to know you will be able to say is there no God in my home mama which is who I'm in is there no God in my home happy you'll be able to say it with confidence and boldness the problem with the church the state of the church today we are not sure you are saying, you never know where we get an answer. Just go try it. I'm not really sure about where I'm standing. Go try it because I'm not very confident and secure with my God. Just go try it. You never know because right now I'm so desperate. I try it. That's not the place the church should be at. The church should be able to say, I have confidence. I depend on, I rely on my God. You should be able to say to family members, is there no God in our family that we should go run around like headless chicken looking for help in other gods or other idols? I will stand as a man that trusts in God, as a woman that trusts in God. I will take this to my God in prayer tonight. You are saying, Pastor, but, but no, that's a bit, that's tough for me to be in that position. You, you can, if you will fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith, you will have the ability to do great and mighty exploits. He said, if you believe me, the works that I do, you will do also. You will ask in my name and I will do it as you serve me. You will ask whatever you need as you serve my purposes. You will ask whatever you need as you show that Yahweh is God. You will ask whatever you need as you show that Yahweh is our salvation. You will ask whatever you need, not your own selfish agenda, but fulfilling God's divine purposes. Elijah and Elisha were fulfilling the mandate of God. The prophets of Baal could not stop Elijah. And I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus, the same God who was with Elijah, the same God, who was Elisha, a greater than Elijah and Elisha is here. And you know where he is? To each and every child of God who is born again is inside of you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. No wonder people are asking, is there no God? Where is God? Where is the God of Elijah, Mganwan? Where is the God of Elijah, my brother, my sister? Who okay? He say he is here. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. His holy presence is here. He is here. Resurrection power lives on the inside of me. He is here. He, if God before me, who can be against me? He is here. I'm seated with him in the heavenly places, far above all authority, power, and dominion. He is here. He shall never leave me or forsake me. He is with me. Oh, and now they're asking now, take responsibility. I hear you, I hear you. Now take responsibility. We have problems in the home, take responsibility. We have problems in the nation, take responsibility. We have, don't have cold feet. Don't have cold feet. We've been looking at the benefits that we have right now in Jesus' mighty name. Now don't have cold feet. When I talk about the responsibility, every benefit commands responsibility. You can't have such greatness with you. You can't have, remember Makisi Tarabande, what I'm excited about in this passage, I should have said this, in the beginning, it says, when he took the mantle, when Elisha took the mantle from Elijah, he struck the waters and he said, when he struck the water, he said, where is the God of Elijah? And then the waters parted. Wow, a great miracle. People watching. So, sons of the prophets said, when the sons of the prophets who were watching opposite saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. Babuona. They saw a manifestation of glory. They saw a demonstration, evidence of the presence. Then they went, the spirit of Elijah rest. You know, I, I know in the 21st century, I know in our seasons, I know in 2021, people will say the spirit of Christ rests upon Edna. The spirit of Christ rests on Musani. The spirit of Christ rests or no, Mrs. Letuaba. The spirit, they must say that as they see a manifestation of the glory of God. But you must have a desire and say, Oh God, I want to see your glory. God, you must hunger and thirst after righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Hallelujah. I need to close, but I'll just paraphrase the rest of the passage. Elisha sees what the enemy is plotting because the God who sees all informs him 
so that he is of great value to a nation. He has respect. He is honored and revered because there's a demonstration of power. There's evidence of the presence of God in his life. Signs demonstrate that in Jesus' name. This is what I pray for us as a church. Eventually, if the enemy comes, he makes a request to God. What I like when the enemy comes, they are surrounded by the enemy. The prayer point he makes first, it's amazing. He prays for his servant to see just like he sees. And I think that's what's needed in the body of Christ, that we all see. We see the truth for what it is. We see our circumstances in light of God's eyes. Says God, open his eyes to see. And my prayer is that churches, wherever we are planted, that our eyes will be open to really see. To see as God sees. And that the servant's eyes are open already. After that paradigm shift, it's turned into worship. Fear goes away. And most of us, what we need is just to see through revealed eyes that are eyes that have revelation knowledge. See, born in jail through the eyes of scripture. We ask God to open our eyes. I love that Paul, Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, 18. God opened the eyes of the understanding that they may see the hope of their calling and see the wealth, the opulence, the grace that's available, the goodness that's available, the riches that's available for us as children of God. My prayer is the same. Once you see it, it just the paradigm shift changes your attitude. The servant sees. And I, I like the what Elisha knew. This person first, who is serving me? Who's working with me? I can't be effective when this person can't see like I see. If this person sees like the rest of the world, we cannot be effective. If the church still sees like the rest of the world, trust me, our attitudes will be bad and we will not respond appropriately. We need to have eyes open. So he prays, open his eyes. And afterwards, he begins to make petitions. That guy can now agree with you if he sees like you see. If he's standing right there, you'll be running away, scampering, praying fear, instead of praying with boldness. Elijah, Elisha's prayer is a bold prayer. He says, close their eyes that they don't see. And the enemy's eyes are closed and they usher the enemy right to the king in the heart of Samaria. That enemy that's coming to attack you is totally transformed and brought to their knees. And later on, Instead of slaying the enemy, they feed the enemy, give them food, give them water, and let them go back to their king. I don't wonder what they said when they got back to the enemy camp. We don't mess around with the people of God. We went there as an army approaching one person, but that one person who was praying, that one person that saw through a biblical lens, that one person that walked in revelation knowledge, caused the enemy to bow down on his knees. You might be a one. But many are there that are for you than they that are against you. Never look at yourself as just insignificant and useless. You can make a difference. Many are they that are for you. Straight from the passage than they that are against you. I pray that God opens your eyes. You might be the only one in the family that is born again. And you might be saying, oh God, I'm the only one. I don't have anyone. Many are they that are for you than that are against you. May God open your eyes and you see the angels that are there to minister for you and see the presence of God. The Lord of the the captain of heaven's army is with you in Jesus name. Daniel, you are not alone. You might think you are the only one who prays, the only one who trusts God and you are against them. There's so many people that are fighting you. May God open your eyes to see that many are they that are for you than they that are against you. Are aware to God's with you. Glory to God. Where is the God of Elijah? As I close, he is here. <laughs> My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Where is the God of Elijah? He is here. Lord, I am with you always. He has delegated authority and responsibility to me. And I will faithfully showcase that he is God, our salvation. If I'm in a boat and it's rocky, about to sink, I will rise up and say, the Lord God who steals the storm is here. If there are people that are not well and they're asking, I'll say, the Lord God who brings healing is here because he is here. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. He's Lord God Almighty and the zeal of the Lord will perform what needs to be performed. I believe him and I will do as he tells me. Whatever he tells me, 
as Mary told the servant before turning that water to wine, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Mine is to just do whatever he tells me. Just like Elisha telling the king, go to such and such, wait for their coming, make sure you avoid such and such a place. And people were asking, who is in their midst? We say they are representatives of God in their midst that pray, that seek the face of God, whose eyes are open, that hear from God and see as God sees, who are growing from one level of glory to another, who are impacting communities, who are making their contribution in Jesus' mighty name, who will leave a lasting legacy, who will pass their baton to the next generation after having made an impact. And it will be said about our generation that were men and women of God who never wavered at the promise of God, who stood by the word of God and manifested the glory of God, who depended on God, who relied on God in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for the impact that you have made in our communities. I thank you for the impact that you have made in individual lives. I thank you, Lord God, that the question, where is the God of Elijah, will be answered by God himself. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name that you will prove indeed that you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh Jireh, the provider. You are Yahweh Repha, the healer. You are Yahweh Nisi, God, our banner of victory. You are Yahweh. You are here. You are the true God. You are El Shaddai, God Almighty. Yes, you you are Adonai, our Lord. You are here, Jesus, our Savior. You are here saving lives. If you are in this platform, you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I will not go before giving you the opportunity to invite him into your heart. Just say, Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. I want to see salvation in my life. I want to see Yahweh, the true God, operating. I want to be united with him. I want to be reconciled back to him. Jesus is the one that does that. He paid a price that you could never pay. His blood was shed for you. His blood was shed that you might have life. He's stretching out his hand and say, come, come as you are. His goodness and mercy will cover your sin. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the perfect lamb who took my place that I might have life. I thank you for that life. Forgive me of my trespass. Forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Man, if you've made that prayer, inbox me and we can just chat and disciple one another and share our lives together. We can share resources and we can grow from one level of glory to another. God richly bless you. We meet you tomorrow at 7 o'clock where we can pray together corporately and keep growing and keep growing. I love you. Blessings.